I'm going to show the installation of a dual rate heading hold gyro onto this uh, cub. Anybody who's flown a cub or a short coupled uh, tail dragger knows that, uh, especially when the planes are smaller, uh, this is sort of a medium sized plane, 72 inch wingspan, but on the planes that are smaller, when you're taking off and landing on uh, especially paved runways, uh, it can be kind of a challenge to keep that plane getting straight down the runway, especially for those that are inexperienced. Even when you're experienced, it can be much easier to do that on takeoff and landings with the gyro installed on the on the tail on the rudder. The gyro that I've chosen to use on this is a Detrim GY48V. Got this from Hobby Parts. It's about 15 bucks right now. They got free shipping going on. Um, but this is a typical inexpensive piezo gyro. Uh, one thing that makes it sort of atypical is that I've taken this apart and it doesn't require any mods to it because the board's already uh, affixed in there, glued, and um, it's already strain relief on the wires. Uh, it's the one nice thing about this particular gyro. They used to come in a, a metal case. Now they're finally coming in this lighter uh, plastic case. But it's nice because the, the angles on this case are right angled, so if you want to install it for ailerons or up against a wall or something like that, um, uh, it's a nice form factor. It comes with, in this phone box, it comes with some uh, gyro tape, and it's got the little screwdriver to adjust the dials, and the instructions, which are, are pretty good. But a lot of this, uh, the gyro setup and everything is very typical of a helicopter gyro, um, and it's pretty simple to install. Before we uh, talk about this the, any further, one thing I want to say is, is there are a couple schools of thought out there right now. Uh, some it, people say you should never use a gyro, you should learn to work the rudder. Uh, other people say use the gyro uh, if it helps you make fun. I, I say if you want to use the technology, I think it's okay to use the technology. Uh, people don't fly remote control helicopters without gyros because they're just unflyable. Um, people are flying fly barless helicopters with three axis gyro systems because they fly better. Um, so it's up to you if you want to try this. I, I think it's, of course, uh, it's fine. Um, I think that. The, there are a couple different ways to do it. You can use heading hold mode on takeoff, and most of the people I talk to when they use heading hold on takeoff, a lot of them seem to be flying on pavement, and they seem to not touch the rudder as they're taking off, um, because heading hold, when you touch the rudder on takeoff, it can be a little sensitive. Uh, I have grown to like rate mode because you still need to exercise the rudder, it's just that the plane is not going to do large unwanted movements on its own without you commanding it. So it makes the rudder and learning the rudder a little more manageable. So my personal opinion um, is that you should try rate mode first, see how you like it, uh, start out with a low gain. If you don't think it's making a difference, start moving it up. If you see a bunch of wag, lower the gain. So I think that rate mode is pretty safe to try out. Um, I, my opinion is that heading hold mode can work better for some people, um, but it can also get you into trouble uh, if it's not set up correctly. So for this plane, um, when, I, when I'm flying it, I'm gonna fly in rate mode and I'm gonna turn it, uh, turn the gain to, to off, a low rate mode while I'm flying, and I'm gonna use the rate mode on my landings as well. This particular gyro is what I call a label up gyro. That just means in a normal installation in a helicopter, it is mounted with the label up, which you can also mount it with the label down, you'll see that, but in general, this uh, you'll wanna look for the gyro uh, pictures installed into a helicopter to determine how it's orientated. Sometimes the instructions that come with it can be a little confusing, but this is label up, so I've mounted it in the airplane label up. I found a surface here that is perfectly parallel on plane with the, uh, the elevator, so I know that that's uh, in the right position. You don't want it to be installed at an angle, uh, you know, 
like that. Um, you want it to be perfectly flat. The other thing is when I have affixed this down to the plywood, I made sure that the plywood was clean, the surface was clean, and what I ended up doing was I first applied the included gyro tape, okay? I applied that to the bottom of the gyro, and I didn't know how well this tape was going to stick onto wood, so what I ended up using was some Scotch indoor outdoor mounting tape. You can find this at the hardware store, and I use this a lot. And it's gray, okay, and it has red release film. Okay, this is a big $15 roll of it because I use it a lot. But this stuff is pressure sensitive adhesive that sticks really well. So for this, so for this tape, if you if you use this and apply it to the bottom of the foam tape they get so gyro and then their supplied foam tape and then the 3M indoor outdoor tape and that goes down to the plywood it's going to stick to the plywood really really well so this gyro is in there pretty pretty good um, I've pushed down on it gave it uh, pressure and let it sit and uh, I know that it's not going to come off and fly. Like most gyros, there's three connections to it. This one here connects into the receiver, and since I'm control, I'm going to be uh, having this gyro control the rudder. That's going to plug into the rudder channel. There's a wire here. The oddball one's going to be the gain channel. I'm going to use the gear switch to control the gain of the gyro, and then this one here is for where the actual rudder servo is going to plug into. On some gyros, the the connection for this might be actually on the side of the gyro somewhere. Um, and when the, when they're like that, uh, you're going to want to look at the instructions to see which side is plugged. So I've got it plugged into a uh, spare receiver here. And um, in my setup, I'm using a spectrum system. Uh, so for my demo uh, purpose here, outside of the airplane, I've got a spare uh, park flyer receiver. So what I have is the um, the signal servo wire is plugged into rudder, and then the gain wire, the red one here, is plugged into gear. And then the servo, the actual servo that goes to the tail, is going to get plugged into this right here. There are a few things on this gyro that you're going to have to set at the very beginning. Uh, there is a limit dial, okay? That's like travel adjust, or it actually is travel adjust. Set that to 100 uh, at the very beginning. There's a delay, which is very important on helicopters, but for airplanes it's not so important. Um, I would set that all the way down to zero to start with. And then there's two uh, little dip switches in there. And the top one is for uh, digital servo. Um, you can set it to the right for digital servo off, even if you have a digital servo, it's not a big deal. Um, but don't set it to digital servo unless you have a, uh, a digital servo installed. And then the bottom is the direction, okay, uh, whether the gyro is reversed or not. And we'll get into that uh, after a, a, a second here. Now to start off to make the installation a little bit easier, on the travel adjust for the gear channel, I've got it set up for plus and minus 100%. So when I flip the dips, the, excuse me, when I flip the toggle switch, um, both sides of the gear travel adjust are set for 100. So on my DX7, my gear switch is right here, and when it's in the up position, it's positive. When it's in the down position, it's negative. Up positive is gonna be heading hold mode. Down negative is going to be rate. You can reverse that if you want. Um, but I'm just going to start off from scratch right here. One thing is, is that this is a plane that's already been test flown without the gyro. I think that's a very important step is to test fly it on a calm day uh, without the gyro. Make sure that everything is mechanically okay. And um, for best results, we're, what you're going to want to do is when you're do, doing your, your test flights or if you have somebody else test fly it, is to set it up so that the tail is mechanically trimmed with the transmitter set with no sub trims or anything like that. Um, that's uh, very important so that you're not going to get uh, any kind of a movement in the tail when you're switching back and forth from on or off to rate mode or, or so forth. 
for demonstration purposes to make this easier to see, I've got this gyro uh, stuck onto a hockey puck. Gyros don't like to sit uh, out on the table um, when you turn them on and everything. They get very jittery. The, if you're trying to test your setup and everything, um, it doesn't hurt to take the gyro and put it out on the table, wire it all up and play with it to see how it reacts. But I can tell you this, is that most gyros don't like to sit there on the table, be loose, it'll get really jittery. So I uh, like to take it and uh, affix it to something with mass. I just happen to have uh, a bit of these uh, hockey pucks here. Uh, so I've done that. I'm going to plug it in so you can see the startup sequence. Turn on my radio. Plug it in. Waiting for the signal. Once it gets the signal from the receiver, it's flashing, and then uh, it's initialized. And in this case, uh, it, when it was initialized, uh, it was in rate mode. With the light on, that means it's heading hold. I'll do a real quick plug and unplug of the receiver and show you that when it initializes and comes up the light red solid, that is in heading hold. Uh, flip the switch, rate. Heading hold. One thing that you can do, and I'll refer to this later, is you can toggle the switch on and off from rate to heading hold back and forth, and it will reset the gyro, and I'll demonstrate that. So I'll start off in heading hold, and I'll go three times and come back to heading hold. Rate, 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 back to heading hold, and you see that little double flash. That means it reset. Okay? So if I go back and forth too slow, Okay, that was three slow uh, switches. It did not reset. So here's this. Here's the, about the speed that you're going to do it. And on the third time, it's going to reset. One thing that's very important is when you're turning on your gyro, you need to make sure that the airplane is uh, still. So while it's doing that flash, make sure the airplane is still. So when you plug in your battery, once you plug in the battery let it initialize, um, let it sit still. If for some reason it did not sense that the airplane was still, what can happen is that when you're in heading hold, it will start to drift on you. That can also happen when you go from cold to hot and the temperatures are hot to cold and the temperatures uh, equalizing. So uh, when, you, uh, when that happens and if you put it in heading hold and the, the tail servo starts to drift, all you gotta do is that reset sequence. Okay, and then uh, it will center itself back up. 